Hi, I'm Suze Weinberg. Today I'd like to show you some tips and ideas for using Ranger beeswax, along with my To Die For inks, to create a piece of home decor. I'm going to be using just a plain sanded piece of plywood that I bought at my home improvement store, unfinished, ready to be painted, or in this case to be used with beeswax. But the technique I'm going to show you can be used on an unfinished mirror or a frame and hung in your house. We're going to be using the Ranger Melting Pot and the Ranger Beeswax, so let's get started. Your melting pot should be empty and clean, and then we're going to insert a project pan. Ranger Beeswax comes in your choice of either white or natural. It's up to you, whatever you prefer. You're going to fill up your project pan, turn the heat to the highest, cover, and let it melt. Now I'd like you to take out the following supplies. You'll need your cool tool spatula. You'll need a um, just a craft brush, an expensive craft brush, an inch, inch and a half. Any one of your favorite color of to die for heat safe inks, a scissor, and some removable painter's tape that we're going to use for masking. Just remember, don't put any uh, color additives into your beeswax that are not heat safe, or you'll be in trouble. Once the beeswax has melted, I want you to turn the heat on your thermostat down. I'm putting mine at about 220 on my melting pot. Beeswax melts at a temperature of 146 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's workable at between 170 and 190. And the project pan diffuses the heat from the melting pot. So at 220 on my pot, I'm probably really just around 190, and that should be considered safe. I'm now going to add some of my To Die For magenta, just squeezing in a little of that, and I'm going to squeeze in a drop or two of the blue, and we're going to make the Melt Dark Purple. And at first, it's a little scary looking because you see all the droplets, but they're soon going to dissipate, and they're going to become colored beeswax, like a transparent color. When working with beeswax, it's always best to warm your surface first. So I'm taking my heat gun and I'm just going to go over the wood just until I've warmed it up a little bit. Next step is to cut a piece of your masking tape and lay it down. We're going to grid out the piece of wood. Now we're ready to go. Just begin painting across your wood surface. And then I want you to stop because the most important thing between each layer of beeswax is that you fuse it. Most crafters own a heat gun. All you do is go across it until you see the shine come back, which only takes a second, and you're done. Don't overheat your beeswax. Let that cool and you can reapply some more. We're ready for the second color. I've done about four layers of my purple. If you only have one melting pot then and several project pans, turn your pot off, let it cool down, snap in another clean project pan, and melt beeswax with a different color dye. And we'll go to our second color. I've added some red to dye for. And again, don't forget, you have to fuse between every layer just till you see it get shiny and you're done. I added a final layer of blue and now that everything is solid I'm going to start removing my tape. Just go slowly. We're going to remask the areas that we've already painted so we're able to paint in the open areas and I find that it helps to clean up my craft mat as I go along. I just save the beeswax and throw it back into the pot. So let's start masking off some of these other areas and we'll create the rest of our pattern. Okay. 
Once your pattern is completed, I'm just going to use my heat gun, go over it one last time, quickly diffuse it, and then we'll go on to our next steps. The surface is now fairly warm, but not hot. So it's like a Goldilocks kind of thing in the porridge. The surface has to be warm in order for you to press in a rubber stamp or use your rollers. I used my dot texture and it impressed beautifully. I'm going to brush some Perfect Pearls over my texture. They stick to beeswax beautifully. You don't need to do anything else, but look how gorgeous that pattern looks now that the Perfect Pearls have lifted it. I'm going to add some rub-ons. The easiest way is to cut right through the packaging. You just burnish them down into the beeswax. I'm using rub-ons from Glitz Company, one of my absolute favorites. So far, so good. You might want to beeswax a piece of string. Um, I've just placed it in my pot. I'm going to take it out and lay it on my project. You want to be careful because beeswax is hot, so don't get burnt. Cookie cutters add a really nice design element. Just reheat your area gently, press your metal cookie cutter in, lift, and you have that really nice indentation. Last embellishment. Make yourself a paper bead. Doesn't even have to be perfect. Put it in your melting pot, coat it with beeswax. Okay. Keep a little pot of water handy. Get out your torch or a match. We're going to become pyromaniacs. You want to set your bead on fire. Just gives it that little bit of an altered look. And here's our finished project. We've got two completely different looking pieces of art done exactly the same way.